ちは、キューアを、元気ですかちょっと待って、聞いてください。そわり、トニアン、ニコモイラ、キャリトレロ。マリガイン、バティ、アトマガンダンガビ、アコポシグロレロス、アビニョ。ホラ、ブイナスノチェス、アトロス、ニノンブレエス、マリガス。ブンジュリビアベニュー、ジュマペレスリー、コムサバ、サバビエン。Merci beaucoup. Topics to be discussed. Hi, I'm Anna Ling Grace Barnage here, first year student taking up BS Ed in Scuola de San Jose. I grew up in my hometown in Polomolok, South Cotabato, Philippines, where we speak different dialects. Most of the widely spoken are Blaan, Muslim, or Magindanawan, Cebuano, or Bisaya, Ilongo, and Tagalog.、Uh, having different culture, different dialects, sometimes the words are confusing because those words are exactly the same in spelling, pronunciation, But they have different meanings depending on how they are used, the kind of people who use it, and the kind of situation where they are in. For example, we have a word bitaw. In Tagalog, it means to let go, while in Bisaya, it means an expression that means surely. Bitaw, surely I will go. Bitaw, muad t u k o And another example is the word langgam. In Tagalog, it means ant or ants. But in Bisaya, langgam means bird. So that is how confusing language is depending on the people who use it and how they are used on a particular situation. So, so that is why there's a so called social linguistics. It studies about the relationship between Language and the society. We study social linguistics in order to understand how language are used, varied, mixed, perceived, and changing around us. The term social linguistics to refer to the term. However, in the past, the term sociology of language was sometimes used. The attention began when the modern linguistic was emerging in the early years of the 20th century. During the time, language scholars attempt to make language study scientific and autonomous. Unfortunately, for that purpose, they were focusing on internal language analysis. In the 1950s, the trend of the internal language study was continued. By the transformational generative grammarians led by Noam Chomsky. They assume that there are principles in grammars, and formulating these principles could be the best way to understand the human's language. To reach the goals, they developed approaches that regard language context as important. But the free context approaches soon provoke criticism. The situation gave rise to the beginning of social linguistics. In 1964, Del Hathaway Heim suggested a component of a cultural context of language use that he formulated into an acronym speaking. S for setting and scenes. P for participants, E for ends, A for act sequence, K for key, I for instrumentalities, N for norm of interaction, G for genre. The formula is widely known as the ethnography of communication. Today, first point of view is known as theory of context of situation, and it has been regarded to contribute to the beginning of the interest in the study of language and culture relation. Besides Firth and Himes' early interest in the study, 
has been associated with several other names as pioneers in the field. Among the important ones are William Labov, Joshua Fishman, John Gompers, and Charles Ferguson. They all participated in many conferences as well as published the early writings on the field. They were on the Committee of Social Linguistic Research Council in 1963, and in the summer of 1964, attended the linguistic program in Bloomington, Indiana, United States, which has been regarded as the event that launched the field of social linguistics. So that was how and when the study of social linguistics started. Up next is Moira. Thank you very much, Ma'am Annaline. So now, let's discuss about the notion of language, dialect and accent, and diaglossia or the high and low variety. A notion of a language cannot be defined geographically, cannot be equated with nationality, and should not be defined by the mutual intelligibility of its speakers. Nationality is a vague notion that has nothing to do with someone's language. Social linguistics prefer to start with the notion of a speech community rather than a language, and they define a speech community as any group of people who consider that they speak the same language. For example, many Russian Jews consider themselves Jewish but speak in Russian, and also Dutchman and German who are considered distinct language. There are no objective linguistic criteria on can be applied. Dutch and German are structurally alike. The easiest way to think of the difference between accents and dialects is to first understand that accents are only a part of what makes up a dialect. An accent is simply how one pronounces words and also a style of pronunciation. While a dialect, it includes not just pronunciations, but also one's general vocabulary and grammar. For example, someone from the United States may say, Would you like some tea? While a person from the United Kingdom may instead say, Fancy a copa? They are both speak in English, and they are both expressing the same idea. But not only will the pronunciation or the accent be different. The choice of vocabulary and the grammar behind both sentences is clearly distinct. There are two main types of dialect. One is geographical dialects or the regional dialects, and the other is social dialect. Geographic dialects are varieties associated with speakers living in a particular location, while social dialects are varieties associated with speakers belonging to a given demographic group. Now listen to the different pronunciation. First is the American English, and then second is the British English. Color, cola, theater, Theater, schedule, schedule, tomato, tomato, water, water. Now let's move on to the high and low variety of language or what we call the glossia. So, what is the glossia? The glossia is a situation in which a community uses different languages or varieties of a language for different situations. Here are some examples of low and high variety of language. Conversation with family, friends, political and academic discussions are an examples of low variety, while sermons, political speeches, Universal lectures and news broadcasts are an example of high variety. That ends my part, and the next reporter will be Miss Glory Rose Avenue. 
Speech versus writing. Speech and writing are surely having a different in way of delivering. Not only that, there are typical differences between spoken and written language. They can be summed up in the following table. In the table, spoken is more than one participant. In explicit, repetitive, fragments, simple structure, concrete, and common vocabulary. And in written, is single writer, explicit, non-repetitive, false sentences, elaborate structure, abstract, and less common vocabulary. Spoken language typically involves the characteristic in the left-hand column of the table and written language those in the right-hand column. Though each can borrow from the other, spoken and written characteristic are another facet of speech styles which efficient speakers and writer control with ease. Charting phonological variation. What is phonological variation? It is the differences between accent comes in a variety of forms. Some speakers might be difficult to place ge geographically while others who speak with a broader accent might use a number of localized pronunciation features. This might include the articulation of certain consonant or vowel sounds. A study found that lower middle class speaker are more consciously aware of speech as an indicator of social class and are making efforts to improve their status. The study of differing, differing pronunciations can reveal social stratification. Stratification means grouping or class and also social aspiration or desire since people sometimes try to talk like those they would like to emulate or imitate. Phonological variation in British English Another study that has been conducted in Norwich. Norwich is the city of England country that different level working class use of ing or the ing is different from one another. For example, the lower working classes don't really use ing or the ing. They just use in or the in, like walking, talking, singing, and etc. Up next is Miss Marites Tongson. I hope you learned something new about the first presenters. Now, let's move on to my topics. Social network and language and sex, which is one of the factors affects the, long, the relationship of language and social. The social network and language and sex. So, what is social network? Social network is an interconnected framework which is made up of set of individuals and community and the relationship between them. In a study conducted by the two British linguists, Jim and Leslie Milroy in Belfast, found that people tend to match their talking to their social network, meaning their language attitude differ the speech community according to their social class. Technically, communities are characterized chiefly by the types of structural linkage which bind their members together and essential and formal social relationships which contracted by the individual into networks and cluster of higher or lower density and greater or lesser multiplexity. Interactional strands depend on, on whom we are talking like can, neighbor, co-worker, and friends. Network can be high density when the same people tend to work, play, and live together. Next, language and sex. One example of the way that language is said to affect society is the sexist language. It's the theory that language affects the way we view men and women because it treats men and women differently. If you use words like chairman or fireman, 
It implies only men can do the jobs, so women feel left out. It is worth nothing, though that the form of the words can influence our view of things. If you see the word farmer, you probably picture a man, although there is no reason why it shouldn't be a woman. If you see the word actress, though you immediately picture a word woman because of the form of the word. This is the end of my topic and let's welcome the next person. Change is the only constant thing. So this language, it changes in style. The concept of style shifting is generally used to refer to a language in change. It is likely mirrors the change in social relationship. For example, occurred in gradual meaning change in the two form of pronoun in European language. Originally, in Latin, there is singular to and plural vos. Vos used to be a polite form to address someone in authority and that mark as respect. Later became customary in a working class, addressing upper class men vos. Gradually, as feudalism drifted, people ceased from feeling such respect to those in power. Instead, they fell remote from them. And that people have become friendlier and less impressed by authority. Language style is also bureaucraties because it's a choice of words used by group of people like jargon and abbreviations such as a wall, typo, info, agonal, I see you, and many more. What about if I speak two or more languages or a community uses more languages among themselves in the purpose of communication or the ability of an individual or community speakers to communicate effectively in many languages? That is called multilingual communities. In some culture, a change in social situation is marked by a change in actual language spoken, a phenomenon called code switching. Papua New Guinea is known to be the most multilingual country. That's according to the ethnologue, the catalog of the world's known languages around the world. They have over 839 living languages. Multilingualism can also occur as a result of political union among different groups like Switzerland incorporates German, Italian, and French, and French rather. Another example in some countries like Northeastern Italy speaks three languages. They have Italian used in organized religion and school. Romans used by men in local bars and German used at home. However, it is rare to see multilingual society which all speakers are proficient in all languages spoken. Quite often, language or simplified language adapted is a common language. A common language of this type is called lingua franca which I know it's very common to you and it's known as the bridge, trade, or vehicular language. It makes communication possible between two who do not, uh, two people who do not share the same native language or dialect. Adapting lingua franca is not only solution to the problem. Communication between groups of people speak in different language. In some cases, pidgin develops. Pidgin is a restricted language system which arises to fulfill essential communication needs among people with no common language. Pidgin is no one's first language. One example is Huba Arabic spoken in southern Sudan, a dialect far removed from standard Arabic. Or the Chinese Pidgin was only 700 words. The, therefore, it clearly does not have its own native speaker. If someone acquires a pidgin as their first language, perhaps because of intermarriage between people whose only common language is pidgin, the language has then become a creole. One example is Shevacano. A group of Spanish-based Creole language spoken particularly in Zamboanga City in the southern Philippine island group of Mindanao in some circumstances. However, if Creole is spoken in an area where the base language is also used, 
the Creole then can be decreolized because there may be social pressure to speak the base which often has more prestige. Now, on that account, as a conclusion, social linguistic deals with language society relationships and its study based on empirical analysis from real life social context verifiable by observation and experience social linguistics also investigate how style shifting happens and the verbal communication accomplishment and social interaction now before I will pause for a full stop, here are some thoughts to ponder according to a proverb and a writer, Charmaine, learn a new language because to have another language is to possess a second soul. This has been Language Program Group 1 reporter saying thank you and finally signing off. Thank you for watching.